Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle and I talk all things photography here. And I'm so excited for today's video because I have a huge announcement I'm going to be making at the end of this video. It's something I've been working on for months and months. So I hope you stick around to hear about that. But I know the reason you're clicking on today's video is to hear some recommendations for beginning equipment for photography. So let's jump into it. So I'm a huge proponent and advocate that you do not need the best photography equipment to make amazing images. You just need to know the fundamentals of photography, how to find beautiful lighting, how to compose your images, how to make a good exposure. If you understand that, you can use almost any equipment to make some good photographs. So I like to disclaim that because when I first started my photography business, I did not use top of the line stuff, nor did I have the money. And I'm guessing the reason you're watching this video is you want to learn how to save some money, but get some good equipment. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about is camera bodies. Now I want to disclaim that I'm only going to talk about Canon because that's all I've ever shot with. I started with Canon equipment. I've always used Canon. I love Canon. Um, that doesn't mean other brands don't make awesome products. I'm just not going to recommend anything that I haven't personally tested and tried. So just to know that there are other amazing cameras, but I'm just going to be talking about Canon today. So let's talk about camera bodies. So my first tip I have for you when you're first starting out is to buy the camera body first without any other bundles or lens kits. The lenses that usually come with kits and bundles like that that you'll see on Amazon or Best Buy, they're not usually that great. Now if you already have a lens that came with it, like a kit lens, it's okay. They're not terrible. They're just not what I recommend. If you're just solely looking for professional DSLR, you don't already have one, I highly, highly recommend save yourself some money and just buy the camera body only and then buy one of the lenses that I will recommend in a few minutes. That'll just save you some money. and. Waste. I don't know if I've ever shot with a kit lens, so save yourself some money. Now, I will say sometimes there's these crazy deals where the kit or the bundle is cheaper than the camera body. In that case, by all means, buy the bundle. Usually they have some cards in there and that's really helpful. Um, but even those you might want to upgrade later as well. So if you're just starting out, just buy the camera body only, save some money there. So the ones that I would recommend starting with is the Canon Rebel T6. That retails for about $350 now. Um, great beginning camera. If you want to go a little bit better quality, you have the budget to do it. I would then recommend the Canon 7D. It's a really, really good starting camera to start with. Um, it is a crop sensor, which I'll explain what that is in a minute, but it's still a really good camera. It retails for about $500. And then the third camera body I recommend if you have the budget is the Canon Rebel T6i. Now, fun story, I started with the Canon Rebel 2 Ti and I've used that the first like three or four years of my portrait business and it was great. So obviously they have come a long way from the two to the six. So I do recommend the six just because it is better quality. Any of the Rebel series, I think it's a great starting camera. So look to see if there's a better deal. Just kind of depends what your budget is. I believe it retails for about $650 now. Um, so all three of these camera bodies all kind of are similar. It just depends on your budget. Obviously, the more you spend, odds are the better quality of camera you're going to get. Um, I will say they are all a crop sensor. Okay, something I wish someone would have told or explained to me a little bit better when I first started photography is what in the world is a full frame camera and a crop sensor camera. So there's a sensor inside your camera that kind of is the hub for all the information with all your images. And so a full frame camera just means it has a larger sensor inside of it. So it's going to be higher quality. It's going to have more information. It's going to be able to zoom in bigger. You can enlarge the images bigger because it's just going to be higher quality. And those cameras are going to be more expensive um, just because it is a higher quality camera. It's going to have more megapixels pixels inside of it. Now a crop sensor, which is what I'm talking about with the cameras I just mentioned, are still awesome cameras. They're still really good quality. Um, they are going to have a little bit less of the information because I'll put a picture up here so you can kind of see the difference, but they just have less information because it's a smaller sensor. So when you zoom in or if it's low quality light, you might see more grain, it might be a little bit more pixelated than a full frame camera would be. Um, but Again, if you're just starting out, you don't need the highest quality camera. Odds are you're going to upgrade later. So save yourself some money because technology, especially in the photography world, changes so fast and things get cheaper and better quality every year. So don't dump all your money into one camera to start with. 
I love the cameras that I recommend. They're gonna suit you really good to start with. But just know that when you're reading up on them, crop sensor, it's not a bad thing. It just means your sensor inside your camera is a little bit smaller than the full frame cameras. My extra tip that I have for you when buying camera for the first time or maybe when you're starting out is don't be afraid to buy used equipment. I know used equipment seems scary, you might not sure what to look for, but this can save you literally hundreds of dollars. I've always bought used equipment except for maybe like one lens before. Things you want to look for when buying a camera body used is the shutter count. You want to ideally stick between 20,000 to 50,000 shutter count on the camera. Anything above 100,000 shutter count you want to stay away from. That camera just is not going to have a long life for you. It's used a lot, so it's just going to, odds are it's going to have more damage. There might be things that the seller's not telling you. So try to stick with the lower shutter count if you can. And then obviously look at the seller's review. See if they have a refund policy. See if they have people reviewing them a lot, trusted, all that stuff. Because when you're buying used, it is a little bit of a risk. And then also a good thing is to ask friends and family members or ask a Facebook marketplace for used equipment. Um, that way you can have a little bit more interaction with the seller and ask them questions if you need to. Um, but don't be afraid to buy used. That's a great way to save lots of money. Okay, let's talk lenses. The first lens I recommend is like probably my favorite. It's the first off kit lens that I bought and it's the 50 millimeter 1.8. Canon obviously because I use Canon and it retails for only like a hundred to hundred fifty dollars and for a lens that's like a steal literally a steal and this is gonna be so good for portrait photography specifically the 50 millimeter is really good it's the most natural to what we see to the eye and the 1.8 is gonna allow you to have a beautiful aperture it's gonna allow you to stop down have a blurrier background it's really gonna up level your photography Again, I use this like 90% of the time the first few years of my portrait business and it was awesome. I always loved the 2.8 sweet spot on that 50 millimeter, so try that out. I would, if out of everything I'm gonna talk about, I would definitely get this lens. That's like my number one tip. Now just to note, the 50 millimeter is a prime lens and what that means is you can't zoom in or zoom out of the lens, it's one fixed length. So you do have to get used to moving your feet but you'll end up loving prime lenses if you've never shot them before because they are super sharp, they're more accurate, and they just overall are better, but you do have to get used to moving your feet a little bit. Um, if you are in the market for a zoom lens, the one that I recommend to get started with is the 75 to 300 millimeter. This sometimes come with kit lenses, so if you can grab it up in a, in a kit lens or a bundle, that's when I would say that's a good buy because it's a really good starting lens, especially if you're into landscape photography or sports. I think the aperture only goes down to like maybe 4.5 or 3.5, so in that way it's not the best, but that's why it's so cheap. The lower the f-stop number on the lens, the um, more expensive it's going to be. It's going to be a higher quality glass, um, but it's going to be... Ooh, really spendy, especially those zoom lenses. Those telephoto lenses get very expensive very quick. So if you just want to start off and get something better than a kit lens, definitely try the 75 to 300. I think it retails for about 125, um, depending on it, if you get it new or used and stuff. So that's a great starting lens. Okay, so let's talk about light modifiers. Things to help you get the beautiful light that you're trying to get, right? And sometimes the conditions that we're photographing in aren't always catered or always perfect. So what I highly recommend doing, if you're on a super strict budget, is either go to a local fabric store and buy a couple yards of sheer white fabric, or go to a Walmart or Target and get a dollar poster board, like a foam white poster board. You can use it as a reflector, you can use it as a diffuser to block light. Um, if you only have a couple bucks, those are awesome and they're great and they work fantastic. If you have a little bit in the budget, a little bit more, and you just want kind of a fix-all, I highly recommend the 5-in-1 reflector. That's what I personally use. I take it to every shoot and I use it at every shoot. So this 5-in-1 reflector has a gold side, a silver side, a white side, a black side, and a diffuser. So no matter what lighting situation you're in, you're gonna have something to work with, and I love it. And depending on what size you get, will depend on the price. It can go anywhere between $25 to $50, which is still super cheap in the photography world 
when it comes to equipment. So if you have a little extra money, the five in one is great, but you absolutely don't need it. You can literally just spend $2 on a foam poster board and it's gonna work beautiful as a reflector. Okay, software. So the program that I highly recommend beginning to use is Lightroom. I feel like it's a little bit more user friendly for a beginner um, versus Photoshop. They're both really expansive. They're huge programs. You're not going to learn everything in a day. It's going to take time. But Lightroom is a little bit easier to use as far as the adjustments than Photoshop. So if you had to pick between the two, I would start with Lightroom. But the amazing thing nowadays is you can sign up for Adobe Cloud, which is only $10 a month, and you can get both Lightroom and Photoshop for that $10 a month, which is a steal when it comes to software. Okay, other optional accessories, as I would call them. One is to get a tripod. If you do a lot of landscape photography or real estate photography, um, you'd probably want to invest in a tripod. You don't need the most expensive one out there. <laughs> That's the theme of the day. I definitely would try to find something that's metal versus plastic because that is just going to be more sturdy for you. It's going to stand the test of time, especially if you're hiking or something. You definitely want to get something metal. If you can get something between five to six feet in height, that is good. Definitely make sure you're checking the measurements on Amazon if you're buying one. Um, I've seen funny stories and funny memes of people getting like one foot little tripods when they thought it was going to be bigger. So make sure you're looking at the dimensions. Um, I'll put one in the description box below that I recommend something lightweight to get you started and the other one is a camera bag most of odds are it'll probably come with what you're buying anyway but if it doesn't camera bags are so cheap now you can get really good quality ones for like 30 bucks now so if you don't already have like card holders or a camera bag definitely invest in one protect your gear you're already spending hundreds of dollars it's worth protecting it the right way if you want a list of all the things i talked about today i do have a free download for you in the description box below that you can print off take with you or be able to cross promote or cross research your investigation on amazon um, so go ahead and download that for free if you're interested in the things i talked about today so i've hinted at it in a few other videos i've done before because I've been working on this for so long but I finally finished my beginner's guide to photography digital course and like I mentioned at the beginning of the video if you just need to brush up on the fun fundamentals of photography or you feel like maybe you don't know everything about the fundamentals of photography and you could use some help this course is for you whether you want to pursue photography as a career or you just want to up level it for your own personal life family and maybe your own small business so this course has over two and a half hours of on-demand content, so all videos that you can watch and go at your own speed. There's worksheets to download that you can print off and take with you to shoots if you need to. There's help from me if you need it, quizzes to help guide you through and make sure you're understanding the content. So I'm so proud of this course. This course goes over how to find beautiful outdoor and natural lighting, how to compose your images so that they're more visually appealing, how to photograph in manual mode and what all those crazy numbers on your camera mean, how to get sharp images every time, and if that's not enough, I've even included some basic Lightroom editorials tutorials so you can get started right away and implement these things right away. I'm definitely a person that likes to break it down easy, digestible ways so you can understand the content. Photography is a little complicated, but it's not rocket science, and I hope that this course helps you. So if you're raising your hand and that sounds like something that you would love to do and you want to learn more about photography in an easy, digestible way, I have a coupon code for you because you guys are my subscribers. I want to give back to you for watching and supporting me. And so I have a coupon code where you can get 75% off. So normally it's $100, but I totally get that when you're starting off photography, you don't have a lot of money, especially if you're just doing this as a hobby or for personal growth. I know I sure as heck didn't have the money to start with, so I'm making this very affordable for you. And with this coupon code, you can get the entire course, all the videos, all the worksheets, for only $25. So if you're interested, I'll have the link below in the description box. If you do decide to purchase it and take the course, first of all, thank you from the bottom of my heart. That really supports me more than you know. <laughs> and so I can't wait to see your guys' images and just to see how you implement this course. And until the next video, guys, I will see you on the next one. Bye.